Good morning, everyone. How you all doing today? Let me open your comments. Let me know where you're watching from. How are you doing? What the weather is like? Our theme today is fall colors. So let me know if you can see some outside. I know I can't. <laughs> I'm in Houston and it's still summer here. I actually was at the beach yesterday, the last few days. Hi, Joyce. Are the leaves turning in Virginia? Is it really pretty out? You, you have some things you can paint from, from life? You can go outside and paint? See, we have a few people online already. We will just give everybody a few minutes as usual to get settled. If you're painting, hopefully you have your primary colors set out. Here are mine. I will be using Daniel Smith. We will talk about what they are and one, why they are important, how we can paint with them today. Um, and we will hopefully capture all the colors of fall with just you know those three colors. All right, yeah, Joy says they're getting some lovely colors. So that's nice. Arlene is here. Hi, Arlene. Beautiful sunny morning in Maine. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, actually, the, the heat is a little less here in Houston. Uh, I was outside this morning. It was really nice. We don't really get fall colors. I mean, the everything looks a little bit kind of rusty. A little, you know, color does appear, but we, we don't get it as beautiful as northern states. And actually, like I said, I was <laughs> at the beach. It was pretty warm. Uh, this week and I was able to even swim a little bit Alrighty, um, let me tell you guys about my setup real quick. It's my usual watercolor setup I have my primary colors squeezed out uh, Separately just so it's easier for you to see them. You don't have to do that You can just use them on your palette. Hopefully, you know <laughs> Which ones they are where they are? Uh, and I have a piece of uh, 300 pound watercolor paper pinned to my foam core board. It keeps getting undone. Let me attach it a little better. I pin it just to keep it in place so it doesn't slide around when I'm painting, you know, so it, because I'm recording a video, I don't want stuff sliding. Uh, this is our reference photo. I posted it on my community. Uh, if you don't know how to find the community tab, you click on my name on my channel, Learn to Paint with Ksenia Anis, and it will take you to the main channel page. And there will be some tabs. You will see community. You click on that and you will see that photo. You open it, you right click on it, you can save it on your computer or you can print it, whatever you need to do with it. Uh, the photo is from Pixabay. Um, I didn't save the link because it's very hard to find stuff on Pixabay, so I just saved the photo and posted it for you. Uh, and you don't have to use this, obviously, if you have some other photo that you like, or you, like some people are getting beautiful fall colors, you have some fall leaves maybe that you picked up in your yard or in the park, uh, you can even use those, it will be even better. This is just an example, because once you understand the principle, how to mix colors, you can paint whatever you like. It's not, a, you know, my classes and my videos, I try not to make them like project based, but I, I'm trying to teach you the principle of things so you understand how to paint anything. I have my color wheel. Um, we'll be talking about a couple of ways of mixing colors. There are two methods in watercolor that we can achieve the color that we need. Uh, I mean, primaries, it's pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff, but you know, it's always good to go over the basics one more time. I don't think it will hurt and just remind ourselves uh, what color theory, the basic uh, concepts of color theory. So I thought it would be fun to, to do that today. And um, um, 
next Saturday we will today we'll be talking about primary colors and next Saturday we'll be talking about secondary colors I already actually made a little sketch so I know what I will be talking about so this will be next Saturday painting and it's painted with um, three secondary colors plus yellow which is a primary so one primary plus three secondaries and I'll explain what that is and how I got them and we will, you know what those colors are how they work let's see some more people joining hi everybody morning Diane how are you doing Diane and I um, have some interesting things pre uh, in the works for you, all of you guys um, we're trying to expand our watercolor audience there are a lot of watercolor lovers in the world and we all we want to know you all and we want you all to join our events so we can all have fun and paint together and um, if you're a member of watercolor beginners and beyond group on facebook if you're on facebook uh, Tammy Rap Studio is sponsoring this week's challenge so fall colors and the prize will be um, access lifetime access to my class uh, watercolor greeting cards so um, the class is uh, new I just published it it's you can find it on xenianis.com the store page and there is a preview video you can watch it and uh, I will tell you there exactly what we'll be learning it's all about painting unique handmade gifts for your loved ones for fall and winter holidays or just you know for any occasion for their birthday or just a thank you note I show some quick techniques how to do that and one winner or maybe not one winner <laughs> of the weekly challenge on Facebook group will get that class for free all right I oh, should I and it's always fun to sponsor the challenge I enjoy watching everybody posting you know on the same theme it's so interesting to see all the different interpretations and um, you know Diane is doing a great job with that group because people win all kinds of cool stuff so if you're not a member yet definitely check out that group what are called beginners and beyond it's easy to find it's it's a huge group there are so many members there um, and uh, it's very friendly very supportive good information there lots of free classes and prizes every week so all right we have one minute guys so if you're painting set out your paper uh, I'm using thicker paper because I just like how the colors look on it it's brighter uh, if you don't have it that's fine 140 pound will work uh, or even just use your sketchbook you can paint really small uh, this is all about today is all about mixing colors and kind of understanding how the colors work so you can very easily control you know your colors your palette and um, not rely on you know buying a million colors whatever if you have certain subject you don't need a million colors you just need a few and you'll be able to paint whatever you like if you understand color theory Texas Hill Country hi Anne <laughs> sure I'm glad you you all can join me on Saturday morning I know everybody is super busy and life you know keeps us busy but just an hour for ourselves to paint some watercolors that's nice all right let's get started guys without further delay welcome to Tamir Up Studio yet another YouTube live that I'm trying to do every Saturday trying to find interesting subjects for us to talk about and the main thing for me is for us to paint together so today's uh, subject is fall colors with primaries so um, we will be painting with watercolors and what are primary colors it, this applies not to just to watercolor obviously but to any medium that you want to paint with so primary there are three primary colors yellow red and blue that uh, that means that we cannot mix these colors from other colors so we have to have those pigments uh, to paint yellow red and blue the beauty of these colors is that once we mix them uh, 
with each other in different proportions, we can get many other colors. And I mean, this is basics, but just reminding everybody, you know, in case it slipped your mind that if we mix yellow with blue, we get green, right? And if we mix yellow with red, we get orange. And if we mix red and blue, we get purple. And these three, orange, green, and purple, I call secondary colors. And we will talk about them next Saturday when we paint some mushrooms. We will continue with fall subjects. I already showed this. So this will be our painting next week. And today we will paint with only three colors that I have set out here, yellow, red, and blue. Uh, how did I know which pigments are going to be primary, right? If you don't have uh, the same colors, how do you know? Some manufacturers like Daniel Smith, that's what I'm using, are very nice and they tell us that if you buy these three colors, this is primary set. I'm not sure about other manufacturers. You can let me know in comments if you have a uh, Winsor & Newton or somebody else, if they tell you exactly what primary colors are. Uh, but you basically can kind of estimate it, right, yourself. If you get one of those, I have it pinned on the wall, but it's very easy to find uh, a color wheel online. Uh, even, you know, they have them for designers, for photographers, and the colors that will be closer, the pigments, to the primary colors that are shown on a um, kind of technical computer produced uh, color wheel, they will be primary colors. So it's important for that yellow not to be orange and not to kind of tend towards green or anything like that. It needs to be true primary yellow. Uh, so Daniel Smith tells me that hunts a yellow medium as their true primary. And why is it important to know the true primaries? Uh, first of all, even from a theory point of view, the whole color theory is based on primary, secondary, tertiary colors. A lot of palettes are based on that. Uh, you know, artists, there are kind of recommended palettes that artists tested and they look good. So you don't have to invent like, what color do I use? Why my painting is not harmonious? Why it doesn't work? It's because, you know, there are certain color combinations that work for us humans, for our perception, and they're already all tested. So, I mean, it's a big subject. We're not going to touch on that. And another uh, important aspect of knowing which colors on your palette are true primaries and true secondary colors is because if we mix uh, three primaries, red, uh, yellow, and blue, we, we should get true black. So that's kind of the criteria for that. And that's also another <laughs> subject for another big conversation. If you watched my uh, Painterly Pet Portraits class, I talk a lot about that, about using primary and secondary colors to mix neutrals and why it's important, why it's important to not to use it out of the tube, but to control the temperature and all that. So it's another big subject for another, for another meeting on Saturday morning. Uh, for now, we will just use um, red, yellow, and blue by themselves. And we will also mix them to get secondary colors because these are all the colors that we see in the fall, in the fall leaves. We see a lot of yellows, reds, oranges. There's some green that's left from, you know, summer days. And there is a little bit of purple. We see purple in our reference photo kind of in the background that kind of balances all these colors. It's cooler colors, so it's good uh, to paint shadows, to paint the background so they stay in the back. Um, so that's what we will attempt today. And I will show you two methods to, sh to mix colors. That will be another important aspect that we will discuss today. Alrighty, let's start painting. Is everybody ready to start painting? Let me look at your comments. How are you all doing? Nancy, the reference photo is posted on my community tab. If you click on the name of my channel, Learn to Paint with Ksenia Anis, you will be on the main page of the channel and you will see some tabs there. 
and one of them will say community and if you click on that you will see a post with the reference photo you open it and you right click on it you can save it on your computer or just keep it open on another device and look at it and i will keep this on the screen so you can if you're on a computer and you have a big screen so you should be able to use this as well and like i said this is just inspiration. The main thing is to understand how colors work, how what happens when we mix them. You can paint anything you like. You can, you know, use another photo, just pick up some leaves outside or paint totally different subject. All right. All right, Diane is chipping in. Yeah, look at Diane's comments also. If she's, she's looking at your questions and if she knows, you know, uh, the answer, she'll help you out. Hi, Peggy, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, some people prefer to watch first and paint later. That's, that's great too. Uh, the video, you know, like any YouTube video, if you click on this link on the same video, it will be there forever and ever. You can watch it at any time again, watch the replay. After this live is done and the video is processed, I add chapters so you can quickly jump between different parts, you know, where I'm not talking and painting. You can just watch that portion. So come back to the video if you need to and watch it again. It's not a problem. All right, I am going to start painting. And I'm going to start painting wet on wet. Uh, my style of painting is kind of loose watercolor. So I usually start on damp paper because I want colors to run and mix and not create kind of hard edges, hard transitions between different colors. If that's not your style, uh, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to start wet. You can start with the leaves, but um, I'm going to start my way, <laughs> right? So. See if you like it and if that's what you want to do. Let me move this for a second so I don't spray on it. I'm just using a spray bottle to dampen my paper. Pretty good amount of water because I want colors to run and mix. So right now we will be using the first way to mix colors is directly on paper. Right, I am not using a palette to mix my colors. I am just going to drop them on my watercolor sheet and you will see what's going to happen. I was going to squeeze those colors out yesterday so they will properly dry, but I forgot <laughs> so I did it early this morning and they're not quite dry, but it's okay. Guys, and I wanted to mention it, not to confuse it, but if you don't have exactly these pigments, you can use any pigment that you like, any yellow, red and blue, and see what happen, uh, what will happen. It will work for a lot of pigments. I'm using true primers just to show you how color theory works, right? Okay. With red, let me mention this. Um, you see I squeezed a lot less red than yellow and blue. Red is very intense pigment and it's kind of, you know, can overpower everything. So I try to use it a little more sparingly. I did sketch out my leaves. But I am not at this stage particularly trying to stay within the lines. I just want to paint really freely and create a beautiful background. Let's take this through to the other side. Let me move this, this is confusing. And actually we can do like a light wash here with just red and maybe take it to this side as well. And we're going to drop in some blue in there. Maybe some pure blue 
here. And I'm going to drop in blue into the leaves where I have yellow. I wanted to paint, um, I thought about painting maple leaves, you know, because they're so pretty, but they're kind of hard to paint. The form is really hard. So I thought we will stick to this, I'm not sure what plant it is, but kind of heart shaped leaves. This is a birch probably. I like the shapes. Okay, let's see. I'm going to add some color in light. Like right here, I see a lot of light, so I need more intense yellow. This leaf has some light. And maybe here a little more, so it doesn't get too dark. This is my focal point, right? So I want to draw the viewer's eye right there. And we can also do this. When I'm not sure how to finish the edge, I kind of like to use splattering because I think it looks really interesting. And I'll tell you what's happening here, guys. Let me just finish this so I don't lose the momentum. I didn't get a lot of purple, um, but it's probably okay. Let me try a little more purple. Oops. This is why you need to dry watercolor properly before you start. See how it clings to the brush if it's not dry? Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it can be, can create a bit of a mess. I want to, what we call neutralize this, right? I want to drag those colors around my leaves. Okay. Maybe soften all this. It kind of looks messy, guys, when we start, but hopefully we can get it all to work. Okay, so what did I do here besides create a big mess? So I started with yellow, which is the lightest of my three primaries. Uh, watercolor would paint from light to dark, right? So starting with like blue or red would be a little counterproductive because then I will kind of paint myself into a corner. So I started with yellow, it's lightest color and it's a component in both orange and green, right? Because when mixed with red, it gives us orange and with mixed with blue, it gives us green. So I was thinking, you know, this is a good color. It goes with everything and I'll start with that. So I painted kind of a diagonal covering my leaves and covering the background right away. And then I started adding the other two colors right into it and in the hopes to get some orange, you, you saw I got some orangey kind of um, uh, transitions here. And I also mixed in blue and I got some green passages here. The beauty of this method is that when colors kind of mix on paper like this, you see I get a lot of variety. All these interesting color variations in that first wash, let me show it a little bit closer very interesting color variations uh, that would be hard for me to paint kind of step by step if I just used, you know, mixed color and applied it on paper. Then it will be very controlled. This is not controlled. This, that's why we call it loose watercolor, right? And also I was able to kind of drag some colors around and see this, this is, purple, but because some of the yellow leaked into it and some then I mixed green here and then also dra uh, dragged it over here, 
the colors neutralized. So instead of primaries, they became a little more neutral, uh, not so bright, not so kind of simple. And, you know, primaries are very kind of straightforward colors, but they acquired complexity. And that's what makes watercolor beautiful. I know some people don't wash their palettes and, you know, they keep some mud, so to say, on the palette and then mix new colors into it. But this is basically what they're doing when they do that. So they neutralize the colors that they're using and they become more beautiful because they're more complex, more interesting. So I just want you to understand um, what I'm doing. This needs to dry. I'm going to use my little heating device and I will try to uh, dry this at least to some extent while I'm looking at your comments. Okay. Hi, Arabelle. Arabelle is in Hawaii and um, still early there, right, Arabelle? You're an early riser. Okay. Barbara printed, uh, says she painted her Virginia creeper in the backyard. That's nice. Yeah, if you can just go outside and paint something. All right. Yeah, it's always fun to, uh, you know, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel on different subjects, including loose watercolor painting and mixing colors and all that. But live interaction is so much better and I can look at your comments and immediately answer your questions, even though I do answer comments, you know, on a regular basis, but nothing is like live interaction and you can paint with me. So I think it's a lot of fun. I'll, I'll try to continue doing them. We have another one next Saturday. And Saturday after that, we're going to paint with uh, watercolor and white gouache. So that should be an interesting session. I also found very fall subjects. I think it will be interesting. I'm going to skip the Saturday that's before Halloween because I think everybody will be just too busy to do this, you know, with kids and stuff. Uh, so, we will, but we will meet right after that in November. <laughs> Linda says, looks fantastic so far. It's a bit messy, but we will get there. We will continue working on this. And as it dries, uh, that's another advantage of mixing on paper, guys. I will show you in just a second. Um, you see me touching the paper. I don't see the sheen anymore, but I can tell that paper is a little mushy. Uh, and it means that the fibers are still saturated with water, which which is probably okay. I'll just give it another second with my little heat gun. Then, if you can post a link to this heat gun, could you on Amazon? I th this is a great tool. I couldn't do watercolor lives because I didn't know how to dry, you know, layers in between uh, my stages. And I didn't want to use a hairdryer because it just roars like crazy. But this heat gun is pretty quiet and it's very quick. It's very efficient and it doesn't burn paper or anything like that. So, yeah, we'll we'll keep to we'll try to meet on Saturday so we all kind of have a routine and our watercolor painting time, right? When we can just at least for an hour we can do this. Alrighty guys, let me pin this a little bit better. My paper warped just a little bit. Okay. All right, we can continue working. Oh, okay, you can post the link. Okay, I'll, I'll post it later. I'll post everybody uh, information about the heat gun. Okay, I am going to switch guys to a little bit smaller brush. This is my angled brush. Let me see, is this the one I want to use? I think I had a slightly bigger one. I don't see it, but it's okay. I'm going to use this one. So this is um, half an inch flat angled brush. And now we have this nice free flowing wash on the page but we want to find our leaves, right? So we're going to continue working on this and add a little bit of precision. It's right here in, in front of me and I'm not seeing it. So this is three quarter inch. I think we can start with this for now. Uh, three quarter inch brush. 
So let's find the leaves. Let's find a little precision. If you didn't draw the leaves, a good idea would be to do the background first and then draw the leaves. So if you didn't draw them yet, you can draw them now or just use your brush to draw them. Yeah, that <laughs> Peggy says add to cart. Yeah, I love that little heat gun. It's very helpful. And I even use it, you know, when I just I'm here and I'm not in a rush. Uh, it just speeds up the process so much. So let's look at our leaves. Even though it's kind of a simple subject, we still need to approach it kind of similar to anything we paint, right? We see light and a bit of shadow on them. Uh, so there is some, like this one is in the light and then it gets a little more shadowy. So we will assume that what we painted, this will be light, right? And we just need to intensify the shadow with another little layer of watercolor. So that's what I'm going to do at this stage. And now I can continue uh, working wet on wet. I can apply, let's say, a little more yellow because shadows are kind of cool green color on these two. I can apply another layer of yellow and then drop in blue in it so i will get all that color variation again uh, kind of soft transitions or i can do uh, i can mix colors on my palette and then start using mixed color because the areas are smaller i don't need colors to run and mix quite so much anymore so i can have a little bit more control there so that's how i'm thinking it in my mind if i don't need control i can paint wet on wet and mix on paper if i do need control I can mix on the palette and then paint on dry paper. Fairly dry, I hope. Yeah, it, it's pretty dry. All right, so as color theory tells us, if we mix blue with yellow, we're going to get green. And you might ask me, why are you mixing these two colors? You know, you have green pigments, and I do. I have like uh, seven of the <laughs> seven tubes, if not more, of greens. But let's assume, first of all, if you're on location, do you really want to drag all your colors with you? So you need to know how to get any color you need from the minimum that you have on you. And also, um, colors in tubes tend to you know they're produced from minerals or they're synthetic pigments so they tend to be a little bit um, artificial so they need they require modification anyways so knowing how to mix color that you need is very important because then you can uh, like i said neutralize it or make it brighter just modify it slightly right I'm, i think you get the picture right so it's very important to know how to mix colors all right let's just paint our shadows again i'm trying to work still fairly loosely and not kind of constrain myself too much because this this is a fun little fall painting it's not a portrait or something serious like that and you see guys i'm picking up a little more blue because i want to cool some of the areas and that's what i can do very very easily by just adding a tiny bit more blue to certain areas and if i need to create a transition i'm going to use clean water you can see it on this side i have clean water in a separate jar and I can just soften these transitions, these edges, and transition to my yellow. And I can also soften this so I can see the underlying layer, that, that orange that I painted underneath. Okay, so this is my first leaf. Let's soften this. And I can, let's say, there's a little sliver of light right here. I can drop in more yellow and create that light. Okay, this is my first leaf. Let's keep working. And it's important, guys, when you apply colors, especially if you're mixing on paper, don't mess with it, right? Don't try to move colors too much or 
when I started painting with watercolor, I don't know, it was something about it. I will put some color down, I'll be like, oh, no, that's not right. And I will start lifting it and it will look all kind of dull because you're messing with the pigment and you get those uh, water blossoms and stuff. And I was like, why am I doing this? Just leave it alone, it will dry. And if it doesn't look right, you can then use clean water on the brush and you know scrub it and soften it. But don't mess with it too much when you're painting. Just Put the color down and leave it alone. Okay, let's try this one. And you see, I'm using the edge of the brush. That's why those flat brushes are so great because I can paint with the brush on the white side, right? And um, I can turn it and paint lines with it as well when I turn it on the, on the narrow side. Okay, it's got a lot of spots, those leaves. We're going to leave that for last. For now, let's soften the edges with clean water. And I see a little bit of orange here, so let's mix that as well. We will need that orange. Use just a little bit of red. It's very intense. It's going to overpower your yellow for sure. This is um, Perline Red. I don't have it on my palette. I bought that set separately, but it's pretty good primary red so if you want to give it a try okay i'm moving on to the third one um so adjust the orange it's a little it has a little more red on that third leaf so i'm adding a little more red to it and if i need to intensify the yellow, I can by just dropping it in there, or I can just smooth the, the edges with clean water, hopefully not drag dirty water in there. Okay. And this needs to be lighter. So the same principle of light and shadow will apply to these guys, even though they're fairly uncomplicated subject. And this edge, I kind of got it, but it can be a little bit lighter. Okay guys, so this is the secondary colors that I applied to these leaves. Maybe even just pure red can be dropped into this orange but like i said see how it, i'm dragging it you have to be a little bit careful with it it's very intense okay and i'm kind of trying to use the same colors on all the leaves because that will unify them right that we're already using limited palette, only three colors, but distributing them kind of throughout our painting, that's what creates unity. Alrighty, so this was my second layer. Uh, all we need to do, so I ask myself a question, what I need to do to finish this, right? I have light areas, I have mid-tone areas like these, right? These are my mid-tones but I see the, there are a lot of dark elements in the photos. So this will be the last thing that I will be adding uh, the darkest darks and the details. We have all these little spots on the leaves. Uh, we will kind of finish and balance the painting. This will be our third step. So I usually paint watercolors in three layers. All right, let me look at the 
comments I have with see just a few more. Uh, Barbara is asking group page to post. If you're a member of Watercolor Beginners and Beyond, you can post uh, there and it's very easy to join obviously it's a free group you just answer a couple questions and you know get accepted and you you will see all the information if you tag me as Xenia Anis or my social media name is Tamir Up Studio I'm everywhere on Facebook on Instagram you know on YouTube obviously uh, I think I'm on Twitter even uh, I kind of post there occasionally so if you tag Tamir Up Studio I will see your posts and you know it will be a lot of fun for me to see what you guys are creating there while watching this um, and also if you purchased any of my classes um, and I think even if you're on my mailing list, uh, which is also easy to join, just go to my website uh, on the bottom of the homepage. There is subscribe to the news. I never send any spam or anything like that. I just notify you about new classes and about events. So if you want to do this, uh, sign up for my mailing list and you get access to my online community. On my website, I have community of my students. So you can post... Um, paintings after you watch the video on YouTube or if you took a class and you have questions or you just want me to see the painting and give you a little bit of feedback so join my community and I will be able to see your paintings as well uh, it's absolutely free obviously and um, uh, I get notifications and I look at all the comments at all the posts so go to kseniaanis.com uh, and on the home page you will see um, how to sign up for the mailing list you will become a member of the community and if you purchase classes you're already a member of my community right and Diane is reminding me hashtag autumn on Facebook group watercolor begins and beyond because then you will uh, participate in the drawing of uh, you might win my free class uh, you might win my class and watch it for free that's what i'm trying to say uh watercolor greeting cards uh you know i explained how to make very special gifts uh i think it's you know if you want to thank somebody or wish them a happy birthday or happy thanksgiving or whatever uh it's one thing to buy a card in the grocery store while you're shopping you know and include it it's nice but it's quite another if you sat down and painted something yourself even uh, people won't know because with my technique it will only take you 15 20 minutes but it will be really special and in the class watercolor greeting cards i explain how to do this and how to turn any reference photo into a beautiful uh, greeting card with watercolors i actually did this for these leaves um let me see i turned it over somewhere there they are so you could paint like a little vignette like this and add your message or not add it just give them the picture so i explained that in my greeting cards class all right while i was talking this dried a little bit let me sure make sure i answered all the questions morning mona lisa Oh, sure. It's so fun to talk to you guys. You know, I'm usually here by myself painting. I don't talk to anybody, but it's so nice to have live people and kind of, at least through, through chat, we can interact. All right. Let me grab, you see my brushes are gradually getting smaller and smaller. Um, I think we should add the branches so that, you know, the composition is completed and then we can make small adjustments and figure out what else we need to do. So to paint the branch, and you can actually even see it in the photo, it's not actually black, right? I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the branch is purple, which is perfect for me. I can make very nice purple. I'm sliding lower and lower, let me adjust this. I can make purple from red and blue, right? So I'm going to start with my blue. And I can make it any temperature that I need because I am mixing colors, right? And I can adjust the proportion. I am not stuck with the color out of the tube with, with whatever I have, whatever I purchased. So I'm mixing pretty cool 
purple. There is more blue in it than red because I want it to be cool. So, and I can even probably add a little more blue to it. And um, smaller brush, still flat brush, I'm going to paint the branch. And the important thing here, guys, is not to do kind of, not to flick your brush all over the place, but to do a controlled movements, right? So kind of imagine that you're a calligrapher and that's what you're doing. So a little bit more control here. I started kind of high, but it's okay. Let's see, I'm going to go through this, okay. So it's important. I'm kind of looking where I'm going instead of the line. And just decisive movements. And I don't like making, um, you know, curves because curves very often look kind of weak they lose energy for some reason. So I'm trying to paint with sections of straight lines. Paint this one. It's got like little um, what are they called? Like dry buds on the branch, little knots. So let's do this. This looks really nice. And there is a section that goes here. And I'm going to connect this leaf. It's not connected in the photo, but I want to connect it. So let's see how I want to do this. Maybe this way, like this. And this leaf is connected here. Okay, and there is a branch in the background. To make it blurry like this, I have to go back to wet on wet. What I can do if I really want to paint this, I can spritz. I'm using a smaller bottle and I'm spraying away from the leaves. I don't want them to get wet again. So I'll just show you this technique. So I'm spritzing water away from the leaves and now I can paint my branch. And it's going to be, it's going to be lighter and it's going to be softer. And it's very important, guys, not to draw parallel lines. I don't know what it is with my brain. I'm always trying to draw parallel. It's the architect in me, I guess. So I need to make a conscious effort <laughs> to go to the side. Okay, so here's the branch. Uh, Barb, the paper is Kilimanjaro from uh, Chip Joe's. Uh, they had it on sale, so I bought a bunch of um, full sheets, 22 by 30 inches. This is 300 pound cold press, and I paint everything on it basically. All right, now if we look at the leaves closer, they have a little bit of a border. So you see, there's like little sections of red, uh, blue, maybe purple color. So that will help me to give more definition to my painting. I'm going to paint that. I already have my purple. Very important guys, don't paint a solid line around each leaf. That's going to really choke your painting. Just leave a little bit breathing room so the leaves are connected to the background. Just paint little sections. It will look much better. Okay. So going around and adding those really light kind of um, hints. Maybe use red somewhere, like where they're orange. I think red will be good. It's red kind of at the base here. Go this way with the red. Can add a little red to the branch as well. Nobody said we can't. Okay, let's work on this one. This portion of the branch that leaf is connected with, I see very clearly that it's red. 
maybe a little more orange you know that will be good too doesn't all have to be one color so I, I hope you see that I'm getting a lot of variety with just three pigments we don't have to have that huge number of pigments and this is interesting guys I had some orange on my brush and I mixed it with purple see how I got this beautiful kind of grayish color so that's the beauty of color mixing you know you get sometimes surprises and sometimes predictable you, you know predictable results for the most part but you get beautiful colors that you can't really find very easily okay what we want to do with this guy maybe a little green connected here so giving the leaves a little more definition let's use our grayed out purple on the bottom okay so we gave the leaves a little definition the question is what to do with um, veins right i kind of started on them um i would go sparingly on these guys so let's use color that's close to the background on the leaf and work fairly lightly because if you start drawing all these hard lines we can get in trouble very quickly with it so i am just adding veins very spiraling and maybe on this one on this one i can actually see them pretty clearly in the light and it's of course very important to observe your subject and try to do what you see there okay these are my leaves and the last thing that i like to do um, you see they have a lot of spots that i i think they give them a lot of interest so let's do that i'm going to switch to my mop brush i ran out of my purple i'm going to mix a little more using a little more water this time right because i'm going to splatter and let's try to do those spots i'm using kind of <clears throat> controlled splattering usually splatters if you um, tap on the brush they fall down so don't worry about them flying all over the place but even if they do it's no big deal i'll show you how to fix this in just a second and sometimes it's even good let's splatter everywhere let's splatter here a little more and what i like to do with those i just take my spray bottle and we can soften this right and they will look like there's something happening in the distance but it doesn't draw too much of our attention yellow looks good it looks kind of like dappled sunlight in the distance we can add some of that maybe green we can even maybe unify some things a little bit just putting finishing touches guys on the painting let's see do i want to connect this now i'm going to leave this light this blue bothers me i want to neutralize it so i'm going to add more purple here and i can paint negatively a little bit around the leaves if i need to to make them stand out a little more but it's important to those final touches are fairly important that's what i'm trying to say um because i'm you know i have trouble <laughs> talking because i'm evaluating my painting and i'm trying to see what else it needs to to be you know to get a finished result see i sprayed water here so everything is mixing again so that's that loose watercolor that we all love so much is starting to happen here And of course, it's important not to overdo things, right? Don't cover every square inch of your painting with, with colors. White paper is very important. Okay, I think this is good. I'm 
can stop have to keep working <laughs> i'll stop in a second all right these are my fall leaves guys hopefully you've got some useful information out of this demo let me look at the comments again i'll show you this in a second when it's a little drier because i know there's a lot of glare uh, the size of paper this is quarter sheet right so like i said i bought a full sheet uh watercolor paper 22 by 30. according to my calculations i'm not super great at math but i think this is the most economical version i know watercolor 100 percent cotton watercolor paper is super expensive but if they don't have to cut it for you and make it into a pad or a block it's a lot cheaper so if you just buy loose sheets and pin them yourself to a foam core board just tape it to your table it's going to be a little more economical so i divided the i tore the sheet into four pieces and this is a quarter of the sheet so this is 11 by 15. um so my paints are daniel smith uh, this is a primary set, so you can buy it separately or uh, you can buy it as a set, each pigment. It's perlene red, Hansi yellow medium, and uh, Daniel Smith tells us that French ultramarine is neutral uh, blue, but I'm using ultramarine blue. It's a little bit cooler. I think this is ultramarine blue is closer to primary blue than French ultramarine. I think French ultramarine has too much purple in it. So this is what I'm using. And my brushes are, uh, it's Princeton uh, Heritage Series. They're flat angled brushes. I almost exclusively use them these days because I just like that shape. It's very versatile and I can paint basically anything with them. They're synthetic fibers, so they're not expensive at all. Okay, what else we have? everybody says looks beautiful thank you guys just a quick sketch um i could could have worked on it a lot more uh but um i wanted you to just understand how to mix colors and to show you two ways to mix colors right on paper and on the palette so you can see the difference between uh the two and what results you get and you know how to make decision when to use which one and look at my background see how all these uh, three primaries mixed and neutralized each other. They don't look like in your face orange or red or something like that. I'm getting this kind of subtle variations and transitions. And that's, I think, that what makes watercolor so beautiful. It's transparent. So those layers of color all play against each other. And that's what we want, right? And watercolor, that's what we want to see. And some areas can be clearer with more open kind of uh, pure colors uh, so the opposition of this two the juxtaposition of this two is that what that's what we want to see Arlene says love the softness of this yes that's painting wet on on wet that's what it uh, does all right all right guys um we're going to wrap up don't forget to visit my website and check out the new class about uh, watercolor vignettes there is a ton of information there here's one example there's a specific lesson on painting lights and candles that can be very helpful right with upcoming season not just for greeting cards but if you just want to get in the mood of the season and uh, paint something christmasy or wintry uh, or some you know just some candles um, so some examples of the cards that I teach in the class. It's only $14.95. It's $40 off right now. So take advantage of that sale, hopefully. And one person uh, who posts on Facebook and the challenge with the hashtag Autumn in Watercolor Begins and Beyond group will get this class for free. So make sure you finish your painting. Uh, or do your painting if you were just watching today and post it on Facebook or join my community and um, post the painting so the students can see it and I can see it. So it will be fun to share our art 
different ways. You know, we have all different ways. We're all connected online. So that's the beauty of our Oracle community. All right, you. I'm just making sure there are no more questions. Everybody says very pretty. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I really enjoy meeting you all on Saturday morning. So we will see each other next Saturday. And uh, if not, get in touch before that. All right. So bye.